All right, tonight the uh, object is to use the relationship between sine and cosine of complementary angles. And our essential question will be, how is the sine ratio of one acute angle in a right triangle related to the cosine ratio of the other acute angle? And that's what we want to be able to answer by the time we get through with this video tonight. Okay. The first part wants to be to find the sine of A. Well, here's angle A. Now remember, if you use sine, we're going to use Sekatoa. So if we want to find sine, we're going to use this part of Sekatoa. So opposite would be 6 over the hypotenuse, which is 10. And we can reduce that to be 3 over 5. If I wanted to find the cosine of A, I would need to use this part of Sakatoa. So the cosine of A is adjacent, which adjacent would be 8, over the hypotenuse, which would be 10. And that would reduce to 4 over 5. Now we want to look at sine B. Well, this time we need to use the other acute angle, which would be B. So if we want to find sine of B, we're going to go back and we're going to use this part of Sakatoa, which tells us to use opposite B. Opposite B would be 8 and the hypotenuse would still be 10, which reduces to be 4 fifths. And notice that's the same answer I got here. And the cosine of B is going to be adjacent, because we've got to use this part of Sakatoa. Adjacent to B would be 6, and the hypotenuse is still 10 which would reduce to be 3 over 5, which is the same as sine A. So if you notice, sine A has the same value as cosine B. And cosine A has the same value as sine B. So if we take our complementary angles, A and B are complementary because we know they have to add to give you 90. And the trig functions are opposite each other. If I do the sine of A, that's going to have the same value as the cosine of the other acute angle, which is B. Now they want us to find the sine and the cosine of acute angles of a right triangle with sides 10, 24, and 26. So what I do is I draw me a right triangle. All right, I like to name mine Jill. You can name yours, whatever letters you like. Now, I know with these numbers, 10, 24, and 26, that 26 has to be the hypotenuse because it's got to be the longest side. Now, 10 is smaller than 24, so I'm going to put it on the smaller side. And I would put 24 here. So if I wanted to find sine of J, and I want to find sine of L, I'm going to use my Sakatoa. So to find sine of J, here's J, it's going to give me opposite, which is 24, over the hypotenuse, which is 26, which is going to be reduced by 2, so 12 over 13. If I want to find sine of L, which I would use L for my acute angle. Again, I've got to use 
opposite, which would be 10 over 26, which is going to round to be 5 over 13. Now it also wants me to find cosine of these functions. So cosine of j, if I use angle j, cosine is adjacent, which would be 10 over hypotenuse, which would be 26, which is 5 over 13. And notice the same answer we got for sine L, the other acute angle. And if I want to find cosine L, what do you think that value is going to be? Cosine L, here's L. So cosine is adjacent, 24 over 26. That's going to reduce to give me 12 over 13. Which again, cosine L and sine J both have a value of 12 over 13. Cosine J and sine L both have a value of 5 over 13. So sine of one angle is the same thing as cosine of the other acute angle. So what is the relationship between the sine and the cosine of the acute angles in a right triangle? Well, we know that the sine of one acute angle, we'll say sine A, has to be equal to the cosine of the other acute angle, which I'm going to call 90 minus A because the other angle has to be complementary to A. I could also say cosine B, it could be an acute angle, would be the same thing as the sine of the other acute angle, which I could always find by subtracting 90 minus B. Notice you have opposite functions sine and cosine, and the different acute angles in each one.